my major takeaway uh, from 2022, uh, I was I was talking to another brother the other day and I asked him that question. Like, you know, we were catching up. He was sharing some stuff that, you know, he was grateful for from last year and things that he experienced. And then I was just asked him, I was like, so what, what do you think you're, if you had to pick like your one major main takeaway is from 2020? And, you know, he shared with me. I think here's was, like he summed it up in a word. It was like awareness. Um, and it was good. It was good. And I'm, I'm grateful that he shared that with me. I think it's important that we actually take time to reflect on the life that we're living. You know, you don't have to wait to the end of the year to do that. You can do that every week. You can do that every day, actually. You know, you can <laughs> make time at the end of the day to really check in with yourself and check in and, and see where you are. Like I mentioned in another podcast episode, asking myself, like, if today was if today was my last day on earth, there are four questions I would ask myself. Who would I want to be? What do I want to do? What do I want to give? And what do I want to le- leave behind? And so those are just four questions that you can, you know, check in on yourself, whether it's at the beginning of the day or at the end of the day, you know, asking like, who was who was I today? Like, who, who did I want to be? And who was I actually? What did I want to do? And what did I actually do? What did I want to give? And what did I actually give? And what did I actually leave behind? You know, and leaving behind can be as you're wrapping up the day, you know, getting ready to lay down in bed. Like, did I leave kindness with people? Did I leave positivity and optimism with people? Did I leave good energy with people? Or did I leave pettiness? Did I leave lying? Did I steal? Did I, you know, really checking yourself? What did you do? <laughs> like, how did, how did you show up for those around you? That, that stuff is important. And the reason we need to do that is because if we really are going to be active in our life, we got to be paying attention to what we're doing. You know, like if you really want to improve, if you want to get better with your physical health, if you want to get better with your mental and emotional health, you, you got to be able to do a compare and contrast. Like, this is where I am now. This is where I was. This is where I'm going. You need all of those perspectives to help you actually get to where you're trying to get to. If you're just shooting from the hip, sure, you might make some progress. You might hit a couple of targets, but more than likely, you're not going to have the progress and the advancement and, and the accomplishments that you actually want overall. You got to be intentional about that stuff. That kind of ties into what my my major takeaway was for 2022 was learning the importance of engaging your own life. Sometimes I think we can take for granted that we wake up every day. <laughs> Whether an alarm, you use an alarm to try to wake you up or you know the sun wakes you up, whatever. Like The fact that you have another day really is a blessing. It really is a gift and it's something to appreciate, it's something to be grateful for. But I think since we're always so caught up in the day-to-day and distracted by so many things, like there's so many distractions all the time, (laughs) all the time. (laughs) There's so many distractions and things that can take our attention away from the things that are really valuable and the things that are really important. And that includes our own life. Very often we just run on autopilot. We just go with the flow. We wake up, we do the same thing we did yesterday, and we just do it over and over and over and over again. And we allow the society and this culture and where we live, the impact of external influences to mold our life and to mold our destiny and to mold our journey into something that we don't feel like we have control over. Like we just show up and kind of participate, like just reading the script that's given to us rather than understanding that we have the power to write our own scripts. Like I think about a train, you know, once you put a train on a track, it's going to go wherever that track goes. And very often I feel like we are just like, we're, we're just like a, a car. You know, we're just like a car attached to an engine going down a track of life, not really knowing where we're going, but just trusting that we're going somewhere. When in reality, we're supposed to be our own engine and we have the ability to get on any track we want and to even create our own track as we, you know, live out this journey. But if we don't do that, if we don't embrace that truth, if we don't embrace the fact that 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 reality is possible for us to make our own decisions, to have the agency to create the life that we want, we will just sit and watch. We'll just be spectators. We will numb ourselves with senseless things like entertainment and other vices and just distractions. I believe, it's gonna be shoot straight with you. I, 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 <laughs> I believe the enemy of our soul wants us to be in that place that we are just sitting numb and not uh, living life. We're not engaging our own lives. Like we are just sitting 
here being spectators, sitting in a stupor of numbness, silliness, <laughs> like, and just distracted and not living out our destiny and not living out the amazing life that the Most High has called us and designed us for. Sometimes I mention this idea of gray mediocrity, and that's really what, what it is. It's just like very gray, bland, mediocre life. Like, I'm just going to follow this plan. I'm going to follow this track. And hey, that's just the way it goes. And you know, the society and the culture that we live in normalizes it. Oh, you have to do this. You have to go here. You have to do this kind of thing. Just keep following step by step as things go along. Just play your part in the, just go on and on and on and on and on. <laughs> that's, that's like not the way it was supposed to be. Like we're all supposed to have our unique journeys and experiences and things like that. So I was reminded of that this year because I would say, I feel like the past five or six years of my life, maybe even seven, I, I, I've been living on autopilot or more specifically, I think to clarify that, I think that's not fully true. I think I've been trying to live and conform to other people's tracks that I believed or understood was a lot better than the one that I guess God gave me. Thinking, oh, this is the right thing to do. This is the best path to take because so-and-so said so. Or this is the advice that was given. So like, oh, if you wanna be a good adult, you just need to get a job that has really nice benefits and just follow along with that. And if you know, if you have some passions, if you have some things that you're interested in, you can kind of do those on the side. But the reality of you actually making a living off of that <laughs> or, or doing something amazing with that is very, very small. And you know, for you to even try to go out and do those things or, or to express yourself in that way or to go beyond, it's really, really risky. And you might end up poor and you might end up homeless and really bad things are gonna happen to you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put up all these caution signs and all of these things and pretty much say, no, go live this way. This way is the best way to go. Even dress a certain way, you know? And I wanna talk about at some point the influence or me wrestling with the influence of, and I'm intentional about saying this, <laughs> the, I guess the culture, the culture of white evangelicalism. So the white evangelical church in my relationship with it and how I feel like even with that, trying to conform to that culture, trying to conform to those ideas and those ideals and how in hindsight at this point, it didn't really help me that much. Probably did damage to me um, that I'm still healing from and trying to get through or whatever. But say all, <laughs> say all that to say, I was, I was forcing myself to go down a track that I just trusted was better when in reality, it, it wasn't the best one for me. And eventually as you, like if you have that voice in you, cause I'm sure all of us do, that gut feeling to say like, yo, I really, really wanna do this. I really, this makes me excited. This makes me, um, this helps me come alive. But maybe that feeling or that energy or that idea that you have is a little divergent from the advice that you're being told or what you're being encouraged to do because it's the most responsible thing to do. It's the, it's the, the wisest thing to do. You hear that voice, right? And that voice is trying to teach you and guide you and lead you and showed you, show you where to go. But as you are choosing to conform and get on track with this other path, that voice starts to get quieter. It starts to lose some of its impact. Eventually, at some point, it feels like it just completely goes away. And what sucks is, this is from my own experience, once that voice goes away, then you start to feel empty then you start to feel alone. Then you start to really recognize how gray and mediocre this other path that you chose is. And like the only way that you can kind of be okay with it is you have to have direct distractions. You have to have vices. You have to have things that numb you or take you away from the fact that like, I'm not doing, <laughs> I'm not doing the things that I really, really wanna do. It helps take you away and distract you from the fact that you can't hear that voice anymore. Some people would describe it as the like seven year old version of you inside of you that was excited about life and that one wanted to do big and amazing things and wanted to live out those dreams or whatever. The more you continue to say no to that and you don't listen to it, it doesn't ultimately go away, but it gets really quiet. 
And sometimes, I think it manifests differently for different people. For some people, I think they just get numb and empty. I'm doing stuff, I'm following this track, but it's just not fulfilling. So there's always this big hole, this gaping hole of emptiness. And as much as you try to pour other things into it or place things in it, it just doesn't work. And for other people, it turns into like bitterness. It turns into like a cancer. I've heard other people say it, and I'm not sure who the originator of the quote is, just like, your dreams don't die, they just become a cancer in your life. So it eats away at you. It it can just make your life miserable <laughs> because you're not pursuing that thing. You're not listening to that voice. And I'm so, I started to experience that. You know, I think the people who are closest to you and who saw, or the people who are closest to me, I think they started to notice that in me. You know, that like something's wrong. There's something wrong with Jamile. And my wife would express that to me at times, like. Something my wife has said to me uh, often is that she's afraid that I'm missing my own life, that I'm missing out on her, that I'm missing out on us and our relationship, and I'm missing out on the present. And uh, that's usually because I'm either very concerned about the future, so it's like it can be anxious or anxiety, or I'm stuck on the past, which very often leads to depression and like depressed thoughts and stuff like that. So this year, my big takeaway has been learning the importance of every day engaging your life, waking up and choosing to see the beauty in another day, seeing the beauty in the breath that I get to breathe, seeing the beauty in remembering those that have passed, even if it is painful, seeing the beauty and the opportunity to try again, seeing the beauty and being grateful for the opportunity to get off of one set of tracks onto another that's more aligned with that little voice inside me. And I really just want to encourage you and to encourage others to like engage your life. Don't let your life pass you by. And I'm not saying that as a person who's got it all figured out and that it's perfect. You know, I'm still like, there are so many days that I'm still fighting and wrestling through gray mediocrity. Like it's, I describe it that way because it, it feels like a, a blanket. It feels like a weighted blanket. And sometimes that's how some people like describe depression. Like it's just a weight, <laughs> you know, it's just a weight. Very often I feel like that. So I, I may even wake up feeling that that way, you know, and I know there are things that I want to do. There are things that I want to accomplish and it can be simple things. It can be really, really simple things, you know, but that weight, that gray mediocrity to just stay in like a very basic and bland and lifeless place holds me. It holds me and it keeps me sometimes bound to do things that I want to do. <laughs> it keeps me from taking chances or, or being afraid to be vulnerable or to make a mistake or to be rejected if I do something, you know, like you're saying, no, don't exert any energy. <laughs> don't go anywhere. Don't try anything else. Just write it out. And if something falls apart, hey, it just falls apart. It could be your marriage. It could be your health. It could be your job. Hey, we'll, we'll just kind of do whatever the bare minimum is just to make it through. And um, you don't have to do anything else. You know, if things fall apart, hey, whatever. It's okay. <laughs> It's okay because, you know, you'll be all right. And so having those thoughts and those feelings and, and that weighted blanket, I really have to like fight out of that. Like I really have to exert energy to like get moving again. And the sad part is I think, I don't think I'm the only one that experiences this, but like when the way that we are shaken out of stuff, like shaken out of those moments, shake, shaken out of that, like numb mind in that gray mediocre place is when something bad happens. So when you lose somebody or say you get in an argument with, with your spouse or something bad happens on your job or, you know, something impacts your life in a way that you're kind of like, whoa, what's, what happened? What's, what's going on? <laughs> you know, and 
we don't necessarily need to have those experiences. Like we don't have to have car crashes to then think, oh, I want to live life this way or, okay, I want to engage in life. We just have to get rid of all the things that are numbing us and distracting us and actually choose to do the work to show up, to engage our own lives. I'm not saying that it's easy. It's just, we just have to do that. I want to encourage you, black man, to do that. Like engage your life, take audit where you are, check in with yourself, you know, and, and do the work to improve it, do the work to become a better man, to become a beneficial man and to live a more fulfilling life. You know, just don't sit here. <laughs> don't just go with the flow, like engage that there's again, like uh, referencing Les Brown, there's greatness within you. Like you're here for a purpose. You're here for a reason. Don't settle for mediocre mediocrity. Don't, don't, don't settle for the gray. There's vibrancy in, 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 in green and good and life and blue and silver and amazing things out there for you to experience. Don't just settle for gray. <laughs> don't, don't settle for just less than when you're destined and called for more. Don't do that.